Welcome to Physics Dream Team Classroom, College Matrikulasi Pahang Kementerian Pendidikan Malaysia. Hello, I want you to have a look through to these all four pictures. Okay, these are all four pictures, feeling sensation. Uh, the first picture is up, uh, the top up is the apple tree. The apple feeling a pulling sensation. The, the person's hang on the rope, it feels a pulling sensation as well. The nails hit by the hammer, it feels a pushing, pushing, pushing sensation. And playing a soccer ball, it feels a pushing pushing sensation. So all this sensation, pull or push is the chapter of today is, is about the uh, forces. Okay, so we begin with the overview of chapter forces. Sorry. We have two parts of uh, forces. One is to learn the basic forces and the free body diagram. The second is the concepts of Newton's law of motion. The first basic forces, uh, we're going to identify few types of forces. Then we're going to learn uh, to draw the free body diagram and as well the concepts of static friction and kinetic friction. The second part of Newton's law of motion, there are three laws of Newton's. One's the Newton first law, second Newton uh, law and the third law of Newton's and we're going to apply the applications of Newton's law for linear motion. So we begin with the first learning outcome of uh, basic of forces is to identify uh, weight tension, normal force, frictional force, external force, pull or push and we're going to learn to sketch the free body diagram and as well as to determine uh, static friction and kinetic friction. So this is our uh, two persons, uh, each, each of these persons pull the rope, okay, pull the rope away from each other. Uh, so the sensation they feel is actually the force, okay. What's the force? Force is defined as uh, something capable to change state of motions or size or dimensions of a body. Uh, so, is it a scalar quantity or vector quantity? Yes, it's a vector quantity because it has direction. So, what's the unit of the force? It's uh, Newton. Okay, because Newton's the one that discovered the idea. So, uh, these are the basic forces. So, first we're going to start with weight. Okay, what is weight? Weight is defined as the forces exerted on a body under gravitational field. It's the symbol as W. Since it has directions, because weight is under forces, well, force has directions, so weight is also has uh, directions. So it's a vector quantity. It depends on where it is measured because the value of G varies at different loca localities on the Earth's surface. So, if, for example, that the Earth has G as 9.81. We learned that uh, during the chapter 2. Uh, but on the Moon, the G is less. That's why we can floating. We can float and have a light step on the Moon. Uh, it has a G is smaller than 9.81, which is all all. Uh, almost like in 6.7 uh, and where is the directions of weight is always pointing down towards the center of the earth and uh, it's the same directions as the accelerations due to gravity of earth as is the is as is the type of force which is the type of force so it has the same unit as newton equation is given as mg mass is m g is the gravi gravitation accelerations which is 9.81. Uh, if you try to find the weight on the Earth, you can substitute G as 9.81. If you try to find your weight on the Moon, you can sub the value G as 6.71. Or on other planets, you can sub the G as uh, the G given at that planet. So you can say that uh, your mass is the same um, at at anywhere you are, either on the planet of, of, of Earth, planet of the Moon, or planet of Jupiter, but uh, the only difference of your body is actually the weight. So your weight are uh, difference at different locations. 
So um, we have two cases. One is the horizontal surface. So think about an object lies at rest as the picture is given. So there are two forces acted on the body. One is uh, the weight, okay, weight as mg. Um, the second case is the inclined plane. So this is the inclined plane. The plane is rough, rough inclined plane. So uh, there is a weight on the on the body uh, so which is always pointing down it doesn't matter that the, the the body is on the plane on the inclined plane but since the weight is always pointing down so it just vertically downed um, w is equal to mg so next case is um, hanging object so the hanging object again the weight is always pointing down the fourth case is the pulley. Okay, so for the case of pulley, there are two objects. One is the 5 kg object, the second is the 9 kg object. So each of these objects, the weight is also pointing down. So next part of uh, forces is the tension. Tension is symbol as T. So what is defined as is the pulling force. So tension is the pulling sensation, pulling force, which is directed away from the object. Uh, it attempt to stretch or elongate the object. So as it is the type of a uh, force, so it's a vector quantity and has the same unit as a force, which is Newton. So which uh, bring us to the first case of horizontal surface. So think about a box. Okay, so a box is pulled by using a light string. So there is a light string. You can see the black light string. Uh, on the right side of the box so it's been pulling so the tension force direction is away from object so it's along the string away from object so it's to the right the second example is a hanging object the hanging object the rope is in between the the, the ceiling and the object so the tension is along the string away from the object object is the box and the next case is um, another hanging object, but uh, it's been hanging by two ropes. Uh, so T1 and T2 are two ropes, but attached to it is another rope, T3. So uh, at the mid sections of these ropes, at the center, uh, the tension is away from each other, along the rope. So T1, T2, T3 is away from each other and along the rope. Okay, so the next example is um, a pulley okay, system, pulley system. So again, uh, on the 5 kg mass, it's away from the object. So it's to the right. And the 9 kg mass is away from the object uh, along the string, which is up. Okay. And uh, the next example is another pulley system. 4 kg and 1 kg is hanged by a pulley. So uh, for the 4 kg, the tension is away from the object 4 kg along the string. So it's going to be up, upward. And for 1 kg, it's also away from the object okay, and along the string. So it's going to be upward as well. So um, next part of uh, forces, we're going to learn about uh, normal force. Normal force uh, is N, okay, capital N, it's a vector. Uh, also as named as a re reaction force, R, capital R. It is defined as a reaction force that is exerted by the surface to an object, interact with it. And uh, where's the direction? Uh, it's always perpendicular to the surface, 90 degrees, right angle triangle with the surface. So the same as the force, uh, normal force is a vector quantity and has unit of Newton. So take a first example, it's a horizontal surface. So this is a box lies on a horizontal surface. So normal force is perpendicular to the surface. So surface and the normal force perpendicular to it. So and is up. So the second example is a box. Mm, it somehow is is stick on the ceiling. <laughs> so the ceiling is the surface. So the ceiling and the object, uh, the normal force is must be perpendicular to it. It's not up 
but going down because it's acted on the object perpendicular to the surface so pointing down okay and the next example is two objects uh, touch one sorry touch touches one another so block, block B is on tops of block A so on the block A uh, it feels um, if it touches the surface so the normal force acted on A is pointing up and for the block B the block B uh, is on the block A so the normal force acted on the block B the surface now becomes block A so normal force on B and B is also upward so next example is a box again the box on the inclined plane so on the inclined plane the plane is now is at an angle theta so the normal force is must be perpendicular to the plane and the fourth, fourth case is the hanging object. So for the hanging object, the object doesn't touch any surfaces. It's just being hanged by strings. So string is not a normal force. So it doesn't touch any surfaces. So no contact surface. So no normal reaction force. So n equal to 0. So the last example case is um, his wall. So it's just like uh, you erase bot erase a bot using an eraser bot eraser so the normal force uh, the surface is the bot or the wall uh, it must be perpendicular to it so it's pointing to the left okay so uh the next type of force we're going to learn is the frictional force so which is as uh, italic f so it's defined as a force that resists the motion of one surface relative to another with which it is in contact. It doesn't depend on the area of contact between two surfaces. It is directly, directly proportional to the reaction force. Or um, frictional proportion to reaction force N. So uh, it is all maths. So to eliminate the proportionality symbol, so you can make it as equal with uh, equal with uh, mu, f equal with mu n. So where f is frictional force and the mu is um, coefficients of a uh, frictional force. So what's this coefficient of friction? Mu. It is defined as a ratio between frictional force f to reaction force. Okay, or in maths, we can uh, rewrite that as uh, mu equal with F divided by N. Sorry. So it is a quantity without unit. Why? Because friction F is uh, Newton in unit. Normal force is in Newton unit. So Newton divided by Newton unit leaves as no unit. It's the unit has been eliminated. So mu has no units. And uh, mu also depends on the nature of the surfaces. Uh, the rougher is the surface, the greater is the mu. The less, the slippery is the surface, uh, the lesser is the value of mu. So uh, these are two types of frictional force. One is the static frictional force Fs. And the second is the kinetic frictional force. The difference between them are the motions of object. Okay, the frictional of static is when the object before it moves. And kinetic frictional force is acted when the object is in motion, when it is already in motion. So, um, you can think about um, kinetic frictional force. Uh, it's always less than the static frictional force, okay? Uh, because that uh, when the body is already in motion, it's pretty easier to, to continue its motion. Compare when it's uh, at rest, it's pretty hard to make it start to move. Just like when you try to push a car, a static car, at first, you're going to push it with a greater force. Uh, but as the cars started to move, uh, it being less force applied on the car, does it does it make sense? Is it so? That's why it's a kinetic frictional force is less than static frictional force. So for that, uh, the coefficients of kinetic frictions is also less than coefficients of static frictional force based on the formula. 
these are the uh, pictures of three uh, different motions. One is uh, object is at rest. So when it's at rest, uh, there is a frictional static presence. Okay. So F capital F uh, to the right is the um, uh, the uh, pulling force. Okay, the external force, pulling force F. So we try to pull a, a, a box. Okay, so it started from rest. So F S it presents. So as the object starts to move, the second picture, uh, it is not yet moved, but it about to move. So um, there is still the static frictional force. But then the third picture, is the object is in motion. It's already moved. So there is no more uh, static frictional force. Only with uh, kinetic frictional force. So for each of these formula Fs and Fk, we can reuse the formula of friction. We call with mu n, uh, just making as Fs is mu s n, and Fk as uh, mu k n, and Fk is less than Fs, and the mu k is less than the mu s. Okay. Uh, so be cautious that uh, there are four points that you need to take notes. The ones that the directions of the frictional force exerted by surface is always opposite directions to the motion. So if the motion is going to the right, frictional force is going to the left. If the motion is going up, the frictional force is going down. Always opposite to the motion. The second is the frictional and the reaction force always perpendicular. Okay, the third is the frictional force always parallel to the surface. And the last part is object is stated due to friction. Directions of friction can be determined from tendency of motion. So, picture shows uh, two, two persons. So, from the stationary, will the box move? The first picture. So, it tried to push with the pulling, uh, with the pushing force. 25 Newton and where is the frictional force? Yes, it is along the surface, parallel to the surface, which is also 25 Newtons, the same magnitude but in opposite directions to the pushing force. The second picture is uh, the, the box is already in motion. So the box moves and speeds up. So what happened with um, the friction force? So the friction force direction is always uh, perpendicular to, uh, it's always parallel to the surface and opposite directions to the pushing force, 7 Newton. Okay, and the friction is at maximum, uh, less than 70 Newton. Okay, so the next example is the horizontal surface. So take a box. The box in on, on a rough surface, so we try to pull a box to the right with an acceleration. Uh, so what happened is still is since it's on the rough surface, so there must be present a frictional force, so which in opposite directions to the uh, external force F, and it's along the surface, so it's in opposite into the motion. Motion to the right, so frictional force is to the left. The second example is inclined plane. Okay, so for inclined plane, uh, the box is on a rough surface. Again, for inclined plane, where does the box try to fall? Because it starts from rest, so the box will slide down. So it slide down along the plane. So the frictional force must be opposite to the motion. So it along the surface going up along the surface. Okay. So next type of uh, forces, the last one is the push or pulling force is what we call external force f capital f so take a first case push okay push force f this is the object so another case object f push also push okay uh, so pushing force this is just you it is, sorry this is just you try to push a box which is hard you need to apply more force to make it move Okay, and for pull, pulling force is direction F away from the object. Okay, this is the first example. The second example, object away from the object. This is pulling force. Okay, and also this is you try to pull a box. Okay, so this it's become easy, easy peasy. Pulling is easier than pushing. 
Okay, external force, take note, external force and object cannot exert force on itself. So, that's it about the um, types of forces. So, next we're going to learn about the sketching free body diagram.